Hello everyone, Ace here, and today let's talk about the recent news that DC raped Superman in one of their comics. Specifically, in issue 1 of Superman Red and Blue, which was first published in March of 2021, with the now notorious panel having Superman provide a monologue, saying, and I quote, Every day they would drag me into the interview room. Every day they would restrain me in a way that left me exposed and vulnerable. And every day, for eight months, they, they did things to me. They did things to me while I was forced to look at him. Nikolai Kozlov, the commander of the Shivereness, the devil of Lubania, the man who single-handedly caused the deaths of thousands of people simply because no one cared enough to stop him. Later on, in the same page, Superman also goes on to state, and I quote, It wasn't just the torture. Kozlov showed me what it was like to be truly without power. Helpless in a way Luther or Brainiac never made me feel. Humiliated. Shamed. So as you can see, it is very heavily implied that Superman was violated for eight months in that prison camp. But let's now move on to the motive behind why the writer chose this course of action in the comic. And fortunately, we have a very clear answer, thanks to an interview that he did. Which is ironic, given that the main bulk of the comic book story itself deals with Superman returning as Clark Kent to interview the man who ran the prison camp. But getting back to the person who wrote this, during their interview, they were asked, and I quote, There's a great line in your Superman red and blue story. It's easy to move on when you're the victimizer and not the victim. What was the inspiration behind that quote? And to this question, the writer, Mr. Ridley, responded by saying, That is my perspective about the prevailing culture in this country. When bad things happen to people who are traditionally marginalized, there's this feeling of, okay, we get it, it was wrong, let's just move on. You can see that just over the last year, or even in this year, with things that happened on January 6th. There are a lot of people who are like, okay, yeah, we get it, it's bad, let's just move on. But it's like, no, you can't just move on. There are things that need to be worked through and things that need to be acknowledged and dealt with. In other words, this is Mr. Ridley openly acknowledging and confessing that his motivation behind raping Superman was just a virtue signal, which is already pretty disgusting. However, context makes this even worse, because there are two details that need to be mentioned. The first is that this is actually adding to an existing story all the way back from 1970, where Superman was indeed captured and tortured. However, at no point in the original story was he ever raped or implied to be raped. In other words, Mr. Ridley forcefully inserted this rape backstory into a story that specifically has existed for about 50 years now. But the second thing to consider is the fact that Batman was actually captured right alongside Superman, and was by and large subjected to the exact same treatment that Superman was. Meaning that if we're going to consider Ridley's retelling of the story to be considered canonical, then that would also heavily imply that Batman was raped as well. Of course, while the idea of Superman getting raped is easily the most disgusting thing about this woke retelling, it is by far not the only problem. For a start, Ridley appears to not know how to write Superman. As to my knowledge, Superman never really saw himself as being the sort of person that could do just whatever he wanted consequence-free, on the grounds that he was Superman and thus untouchable. Ironically, Mr. Ridley seems to be less writing Superman here and more writing Dr. Manhattan, albeit a Dr. Manhattan who, for whatever reason, hasn't completely succumbed to nihilism yet, and at least still has some moral compass. So like I said, Mr. Ridley does a pretty poor job of writing Superman. But with this being a woke story, he also takes the time to say that capitalism evil. With Superman going on to later monologue that Kozlov thrived in the past because few people care to stand against him. Ironically, his only crime now was capitalism. Would anyone care how he made his money? In other words, Superman unironically thinks that capitalism is a crime. 
And by Superman, I mean Superman written by the typical far leftist cancer who decided to rape Superman. But the ultimate irony here is how the story ultimately proves that Mr. Ridley is wrong in his whole entire goal. This is because Superman's efforts to try to deal with it rather than just move on have failed spectacularly. During his interview, he never got any satisfaction whatsoever from it, and quote, dealing with it didn't accomplish anything at all, meaning that in the end he has been left for 50 years as a sulking, self-pitying victim and will continue to remain a sulking, self-pitying victim. Nothing that happened in the comic helped heal Superman, and instead all he has to show for his attempts to, quote, deal with it are 50 years of his life wasted to sulking, self-pitying victimhood. So in other words, Mr. Ridley's attempt to create a story that justifies his point of view ends up ultimately backfiring in demonstrating why he is wrong. So as you can probably tell, my thoughts on this particular comic book story aren't exactly positive, and instead I am thoroughly disgusted by it. In fact, this is perhaps the most clear-cut example of why I believe we should start referring to the addition of wokeness to existing art as artistic rape. Because not only is it forcefully inserted against the consent of the fandom itself, but also leaves scars on both the characters and lore that it is done to. So calling what happened to Superman a form of artistic rape seems to be the most appropriate phrase to use, and is a phrase that perfectly highlights the truly disgusting and cancerous nature of the activists that do it. Frankly, the damage that this one particular story does to Superman is enough that I want DC to declare it non-canonical. Imagine unironically thinking that it is somehow a good idea to rape Superman in an attempt to virtue signal about how holier than thou you are. I honestly don't know what more to say with regards to the absolute waste of oxygen that came up with that idea, which I guess means it's time for me to pack this whole video up. But in any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out. Oh.